problems with this. The only problem is we have something where everybody can participate. Maybe the uh, bogus story Standard damper where it just comes over and the the uh, 
furniture or the uh, pendulum just bangs into it. Yeah, it's cheaper to make the U. The U um, yeah, probably so. And then uh, 1942 to 48 went back to the U for only for the military though. Right. And then uh, after that, because I don't think there were any bugs that were made between 42 and 48 that didn't go to the war effort. Not that I know of. No. Uh, I've never seen any of the serial. I've got, I've got a lightning. Do you have a lightning? Like, yeah, but you know, a lot of that stuff, it's like what, whatever, they, it just got shipped. Right. You know, and it, it could have been a... So we knew the bug so. had to be, right. we knew the serial number to put it at 47 or 48. Right. So we knew the bug had to be from the war and he took it home. Yeah. And the reason we know he took it home is because he would have never been able to afford that bug. It was brand new. Yeah, there were 13 or 14 bucks. 25. 25. 25. 25. So uh, he knew, I think we knew he couldn't afford the key because he didn't have a job since we were moving to the Nani district. Right. So we traced it by where he moved, when he moved, and when the key serial number was. And we were able to de determine his old call, his new call before he moved, when he got the, where he got the bug, and uh, where he took it to, to work in the highway patrol system. And then uh, later he died. Uh, oh, really? Does that have to be that loud? Uh, later he died, and then, of course, uh, she got the key. And her brother, her brother got a key, but he ended up with the, uh, he ended up with a Vibraflex racer or whatever it's called, square racer. Square racer, yeah. Yeah, the, the I am the panel. Oh, uh, so I let her know she got a better deal. Oh, yeah. But I, I, I stripped the key down, I polished it all up. Um, the only thing that I couldn't control was the cereal plate. They used to spray them with a rose colored lacquer. Yeah, but a lot of that wore off over. His was pretty good. And when I cleaned it, a few little areas. In it. Just a few little, tiny little areas. So it's, you know, about one or two little chromey areas. But the rest of it is in excellent shape. Well, do you remember the one that I had that was a family key from the war? It was a, a blue racer and one post on the damper was, was do you remember That's that? how it was. That's how it was because those keys were originally made and drilled for the other damper. That's right. And if you put the cheap damper on, that's correct. It, it moved the key too far, far. And it, and it, it was too far. fast. No, yeah. it was too fast. Yeah. Mark K six JJR. He had a model, the black crinkle finish model, right. which I think they sold to the amateur radio operator. Right. That one damper was a perfect square view. Yeah. And. That thing couldn't go slower than 28 words a minute. Well, so Chris, I ended up re drilling the hole and sliding the thing yeah, over for it. Yeah. Well, the one that Chris has that he got for me is it's a it's a banshee. When, when if you got just one, even just one large weight, that thing's moving at 25, 28 words yeah. a minute. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. slowest I could get yeah. Mark's key was 28 with a Oh, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. And then, uh, but this one here, like you said, the U damper, instead of being like this, it was one side they leaned it over. It looks like it got bent. Yeah, yeah, it did. It looked like it was just somebody just took it and heated it up and bent it over. But you know it was naturally done because the chrome or the nickeling is still in perfect shape. There's no cracking. There's no cracking in the uh, in the. They did it just to get the key out the door. So. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the key was just in the key out the door. Yeah. So in any case, it came out just absolutely beautiful. Yeah. And uh, she needed a uh, she needed the two finger pieces. She needed two feet, and uh, you know they were hard as a rock. And then she needed um, I think like two screws. And then I got her the uh, the very speed that goes on. Oh yeah, the yeah, though. And now that bug was able to get down to about 12 or 13 words per minute. With the very speed. With the very speed. Oh, that's what Chris uses on here. It's great. I love cool. that very yeah. speed. It works really well. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Mike, yeah. did she learn code? Did she get on the air? Did she, she learned code in the class, and she still has a little bit of code to go for. She's going to be ready for that bug, but she's, she's going to do it. Tell her to, to start getting on the air and talking to people because that stuff 
best thing you can do. Sure, of course. Yeah. That's always the uh, that's always, uh, that's always uh, the best way to go. Yeah. So let me see here. I have one, two, two three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and that doesn't count. It's one twelve six. Oh, twenty-five, thirty-six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Did I count myself? So we do. We have 15 people, 15 for here. Yeah. All right, so I'll tell you what. Let's do this. Let's introduce ourselves so the people who are new here know who we are. And the people online, if you want to just kind of raise your hand and let them know who you are, when you say your name. And uh, I believe we have uh, two people watching, so there are people out there. I'm Mike at 6MQL. And then hey, Carol, go ahead and start your direction. Uh, I'm Carol, KB4MD. I'm also the uh, section manager for the WLL Assessment Development. I'm Steve K5YU. I'm Steve K5YU. I'm Steve K5YU. My K6LU. Anything that says E. Arrows K6TBB. Andrew K6OB. Angie KG6FJF. I'm Rob, M6KIX. And Bob, N6PGQ. Bill, KD6RO. Right there, KD6GPY. Mark, AJFL, AG6FL. <coughs> John, WP6UBK. All right. Great, thank you. Um, so, welcome, Steve. Uh, appreciate you coming out. And uh, Mark, I'm sorry, I'll get you on the list eventually here. <coughs> Uh, I print over. I print twelve because I figured, okay, every year I'll update it. But <coughs> I maybe I'll. Hey, would you get a crayon? What's that? <laughs> a crayon? No, hey, there's a blank spot. As long as there's a blank spot, you can fill his name. Um, I did. Uh, I I didn't mention uh, our newest member who did join at the end of July. So. Um, I should have mentioned him in the August meeting. I don't know if I did. If I didn't, I apologize. And uh, that's Rocky. Uh, Rocky's call is AE7US. And uh, I believe Rocky has been on the uh, 80 meter net. I, I think I, that call sounds familiar. The call does sound familiar. And, uh, yeah, he's in Oregon. Oregon. He's in Oregon. I don't recall what city in Oregon he's in. I can look his call up on QIZ and I'm sure he'll tell me. But Portland. Is it Portland? Thank you. So, yeah, he's in Portland, Oregon, and he's our newest member. I don't believe we picked any other members up in the month of uh, August or uh, September. What happened was uh, he, he got his membership approved on the 25th of July, so everything was just piling up and uh, I don't think I even got it into the newsletter because we were dealing with uh, something else uh, which I can mention. Uh, Angie has uh, volunteered, <laughs> yeah, I suckered today. Proofreader. <laughs> yeah, uh, I suckered Angie into proofreading the newsletter now so when I type it up I can send it over to her and at least now somebody can see if what I'm writing makes any sense. You know, it, it's very hard to write a whole newsletter and then edit it yourself and find issues. So in the past, if you found errors within the newsletter, you know, it's because it's all on me to write it, read it, correct it, and send it out. Yeah, uh, they always jump right out at you about three months later. Sir. Sure. I mean, if I if I read it later on, uh, you know, it, usually what happens is when I email it to everybody. Uh, I read, because I'm on the list too of current members, so when I receive it in my personal email, I read it, and then just to make sure the PDF looks good, and then I'm like, oh, I missed that, or that's not what I meant to say. So uh, it's nice to have Angie uh, at least looking over it, I appreciate it. We're going to work out how we do it, probably, I'm thinking Word, and maybe you can format it up if you want to do the Adobe. Uh, but... Uh, that's going to work out really well, I hope. It's going to take a little bit off my back, and my wife will be a lot happier because it always makes her angry when I say, can you just read this? And she, she 
she goes through every comma, every <laughs> period, and semicolon, and I'm just like, no, 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 I don't care about the punctuation line. I just want the words right. Because, you know, it just makes her angry that she has to do all that. So, uh, in any case, uh, we'll see how it works. The wife's finding faults of what we do is kind of what they do. do. Yeah, it's just what they do. Well, she doesn't doesn't really have time for it. She's the vice president of a a pretty big company, so she's got her own load of stuff to do. But um, uh, we'll see how it works out. I'm sure it'll it'll be fine and uh, it'll be helpful to me, so I appreciate it. Listen, the newsletter requires articles. You notice that there's always some sort of article in there that talks about what we have as a credible agent. Sure. Shall I get the door? Yeah, if you want. Here, can just yeah, yeah, right. go ahead. Um, there's always an article about the presentation and what we, uh, what we saw or heard. If you make a presentation and you have a PowerPoint, let me have the PowerPoint because I can read it and decode it and, and write it into an article. Um, if it's an oral presentation and there's nothing written up, then it's, I have to actually pay attention to the presentation. <laughs> I don't like that. No, so uh, it's to be helpful. Uh, but in addition to that, like I said, it's not easy to write. I think that our newsletter, I typically get about nine pages. That's a lot of pages for a newsletter. It's not just a, here's what's happening, you know, we'll see you at the pancake breakfast. It's, there's some pretty decent information. Yes, there's a lot of repetitive repetitive information. Clearly, there's information for new members about, you know, make sure you send me your email address if you change your email address because you're not going to get a newsletter anymore. You're not going to get a reminder to uh, sign up for the club anymore at the end of the year. Remember, we pay our dues in January, so... Come December, I'm going to start emailing people saying, don't forget. Um, so if you change your email because you went from Hotmail to Gmail or you know something changed, you need to let me know. Um, the only address I have is the one that you registered when you signed up for the club. And if that was six or eight years ago, then that's all I've got. Uh, the other thing is, uh, yes, there's always the merchandise information. We still have t-shirts. We still have, uh, we still make mugs. and. They're all personalized, so if you want a hat, t-shirt, or a mug, let me know. And then finally, uh, I would love to see some stuff from you guys come in. If it's not something you write personally, I know Eris has been on some little uh, outings where he's taking pictures of his mobile setup and let me know what's going on. I believe uh, I'm still waiting on Rick, uh, M6IET down in LA. He did his little V expedition. I don't know what to call it, his island expedition in Santa Cruz Island. He's been doing that yearly now. That? What's that? Did he, did he just send those pictures? No, I didn't receive those pictures from him. So no. if he, but he usually writes a little two or three paragraphs up and then I publish it to the home page. I may have if he sent it and I just don't remember. That's very possible. But uh, if it doesn't exist, it's because I didn't receive it. And then um, the other thing is, uh, you know, if you see something that interests you and you think that other people would be interested in it as well, don't hesitate to send me the article because maybe it's something I can put on the uh, home page or maybe it's something that we can put into the newsletter because other people would be interested to read about it too. Uh, there's been a few things that I've been sent by other clubs. Uh, I'm somehow on the uh, distribution list for about four different clubs in Sacramento area, which is great. Uh, and one of the clubs sent out information, I believe, either that or it was a friend of mine in there. Uh, it was information on how, excuse me, how the uh, solar cycle is connected to, I think they said Mercury and Jupiter's uh, alignment of the planets. Yeah, alignment of the planets and their and the magnetic pole. So they're starting to see how our 11 year cycle is actually being controlled by other planets and not just by the sun itself. So that was some really interesting reading. I might throw that into the newsletter. Uh, and then there's been a few other things. Don't forget, we have the, uh, we have the website and if you go, let me see if I can do this. Uh, uh, if you 
go to the website and you go up to the top and click on club activities, teams and events, there's always something going on here. There's Rick's schedule from when he was there. And there's some information on the Elk Road, what's going on with them. And a new uh, code proficiency uh, certificate. Has everybody seen that? This is something ARRL is offering. If you copy code uh, proficiently and you send in your, uh, it's kind of like the field day report, you send it in and they see that you've got enough characters in a row correct, I think it's two minutes or so, one minute, then they uh, will send you this certificate. Now, I believe that they've had that certificate in the past, but they've updated it because, yeah, they've updated it here with the one you see on this picture. Uh, Vibraflex actually started sponsoring it, so, uh, so it's a nicer looking, you know, sure it's got a Vibraflex key on it, sure it says Vibraflex, but it's still a free certificate. And uh, anybody who got the certificate in the beginning of the year, uh, they said that at no charge they would exchange your old certificate out with the new version. Uh, that Scott would be paying for that too. So this is coming out of Scott's pocket. He's uh, Scott, the owner of Fiberflex. So he's paying for this. And then you're giving away a key you know, like every other month or something like that, Mike? I do think there was some sort of giveaway. Um, I would urge you guys go to our website and scroll down and read about it. There's even a link to where you can find more information. So that's on there. And then uh, is this your station, Carol? Uh, yep. I think that's the uh, Puerto Rico station. Yeah, the room, yeah. So, you know, you can see a little video of that. So there's always something going on here. And then, of course, on the home page, there's uh, some other things that talk about whatever might be uh, happening uh, with the club. So obviously, uh, there's the key there that you might recognize that it's talking about the bug roundup. We decided to put a note about the uh, Morse code class and the bug roundup on the home page because a lot of people were coming to the page to look for information on the bug roundup and they didn't know where to go in the website to find right. it. So we just put it on the home page. And that was Benny, uh, K5KD. That was his suggestion, a great suggestion. And I went ahead and moved that there. And of course it has a link to go straight to, to that. There's a presentation if you want to watch an hour and 45 minutes that N6NA recorded. That's Carol's recording. Uh, thank you for that. I can't say thank you enough. Um, and then finally at the bottom of the page here is uh, Tamitha Smith. What is Tam Tamitha Smith? Scope. Scope. Tam Tamitha Scope. Her reports come out about once a week or once every other week. And they're solar reports. And now she's including apparently weather and uh, moon, which is kind of interesting. So I haven't seen this current video. But this video updates itself automatically every single time she comes out with a video and changes it, it goes to our website on this home page. And so I may not even notice that it's happened. Uh, but you guys should check back regularly if you want to see that video. It's, it's actually a great video. And then- um, She does a good job. And of course, uh, for the members who don't already have their name in blue here, this is the uh, web page. I don't know if you remember what this is, but say for example, we can see that Mike has one, so we'll click on Mike's, and then you see what's happening here is he sent us some pictures to post on the website. So now they're on his personal home site. And if you have a QRZ page that you maintain, you can put a link to to your uh, to your W6SFM page, and uh, people can actually see your bio here on W6SFM. And then of course here's the bio, the written bio about. Mike and his trip. So uh, there's a bunch of them here. If you haven't already seen them, go and you know poke around and see. For our, our silent keys, we have uh, a memorial to our past members who have uh, become silent keys. And you can read about who they were if you didn't know them personally. And uh, all, of, all of the people who were members of our club, we uh, show them respect by keeping them as permanent members of the club and, and hosting their uh, memorial. So um, if you want to put something in, please let me know and we can add a bio and pictures. However, 
uh, let's say if we look at David, I believe uh, K6CIM, uh, where is he? Here it is, K6CIM. If you go to, to David's page, you see what's happening here is he wants to maintain all his pictures himself and his bio. So we just put his web page, uh, or we put his QRZ page in his personal space. So now anybody who visits the club and wants to read about David, they can see his QRZ page here. And uh, also, uh, you see here he talks about being a member of W6SFM and this logo is available for any of you to post on your QR page if you're interested. I, just, I, I sent you two pictures. Oh, okay, great. Uh, I'm going to guess that Rick is probably watching. If he is, then... Uh, I have got him on my phone. I've got him on the other computer. Yeah, but I want him to write something up so it's more than just pictures. pictures well, there, there's some written stuff. Oh, there is? Okay. Sorry, yeah, send me what you have. So anyhow, um, that's just a brief you on the web. Like I said, if you have a, if you want a member page and don't already have something, let me know. We can either make it your QRZ page or we can make it your personal information that you send me. And then, uh, of course, there's the merchandise that's always available and you can order online. All right, uh, Morse code class. Most, uh, we're going to start our new class on the 11th, and that's next week, I think. So, I believe we have 12 students, much lower than before. Uh, you know, we used to bring in, we used to get about 30, 35 people each time asking to sign up, and I would cut it short at about, uh, I believe I would cut it short at about 22, because once you get past 22, it becomes difficult to keep an ear on everybody and scan the room for everybody's fist constantly. So, um, and also this room gets pretty crowded. We're, we're actually next door. Crowded and loud. <laughs> yeah, that's the volume is not loud. Uh, it's not really that loud, actually. And there's volume knocks on the keys now. But um, the, uh, the class starts on the 11th. We have 12 down from, like I said, about 22. Used to be 35 would sign up, and then what would happen is I would clip it at 22, and then I would move those other people to a wait list. And then as the year went, or the six months passed, other people would keep adding the wait list. And then I would email those people. They would be first placed or first dibs. And then the rest would get put back on the wait list. And we did that for probably four years of having a wait list. So I know we've had almost 400 people go through the class. That's a lot of people. And uh, you know, I'm hoping that we continue to. I, went over to the M6NA meeting this Tuesday, and I mentioned it. They are always gracious enough to give me a chance to talk about it. Um, and uh, I got two people that signed up. That's uh, But I got uh, two people who said they couldn't sign up because they were going to be out of town, so they wanted to be on the wait list. But I never got an email from them telling me they wanted to be on the wait list, which I gave them a card and said, go to this website contact and send me an email. Uh, so I don't know who they are and hopefully they'll stick with AM radio long enough in six months to be on. Do the other clubs like Foothills and yeah, uh, they, they know they know that you're having that. Yeah, this year for the first time I actually sent Carol the list or Carol the uh, email that I would like to have her distribute to all the clubs. I have the clubs and I I've been in contact with a lot of them, but the problem is the president changes, the email address changes, and when I send out my bulk email to, I think it's like 15 clubs, uh, I get back like six or eight emails telling me they're, they're down. Mike, as you notice, the very few clubs maintain the website. Yes, yeah. yes, I have noticed. Yours is actually, <laughs> Carol does an excellent job with ours. Yeah, There's yeah. a couple others around here that are pretty well. Good. Yeah, There's most, most of them, of them are really bad. bad. Yeah, and even when I go just to try and find the address of somebody, it's not even accurate. Uh, you know, the president is the president from two times ago, and that email address doesn't even work anyway. Or it's info at the club address, and 
that doesn't go anywhere either. Now, interestingly enough, our newest member, Rocky, he said that he tried sending emails to Chris, John, and myself, and to the club, and that he never got any responses. That seems a little unusual to me, because yeah. I maintain all the emails, too. And I see, even if they spell a name wrong, like if I say, uh, a lot of times I get email for Chris, AI6, uh, AI6UK, because he says K, and then it's called, so AI6UK, it'll come to me. So if somebody spells a call letter wrong, you know, AI6UK at W6SFM, it sends it to my general mailbox, uh, for the administrator, and then I just forward it to the person I know it's really trying to get to. Uh, I don't read your personal email, so don't worry about that. But uh, I do pass it back over to you. And then sometimes I'll email the person who sent it and let them know that the person you're trying to contact is AI6U, not AI6UK. So uh, another reason to maintain your email. But uh, yeah, so I'm a little surprised when he said that he wasn't able to get us, especially through the contact us page. Uh, maybe Andrew, if you could send an email to the contact us, and I'll just make sure it comes through. We'll probably hear it chime us over the TV. Uh, but uh, yeah, I was a bit surprised with that. I know John forwarded me an email from Rocky, so maybe he meant he sent everybody who didn't hear anything back within five minutes. Because <laughs> I had already received the same email he did for the most part within about 10 minutes of him sending it to me and then answered the back right. right. So I don't know, but I don't want to. I don't want to yeah. say that he uh, is doing something wrong, but he may not. Be. I've never had that happen. We own the server. Uh, Howard, one of our members, he actually owns the server and sitting uh, at his shop and. Uh, so there's nothing getting lost anywhere because it can't get lost. It goes straight to his computer and back out to mine. So we're just connected directly. Uh, I know when he does because uh, I get notifications too. So I don't know. I can't answer to what is actually going on. But uh, I suspect that, like I said, three emails went out to the contact and uh, they all went and he wrote me probably last and just said that he didn't get answers back but it was, they were probably all within a day unless maybe i just accidentally trashed an email and didn't realize uh, you know that, he, that it was from him and that could have been a month ago when he originally signed up but he is listed on the members page and i did uh, reassure him that even though we didn't answer the email he definitely been a member since 17 25 and uh, he's listed on our members page and, and then I sent him up the two newsletters I sent him July's newsletter even though he wouldn't have gotten it otherwise and I sent him August which he should have received uh, I did find a clerical error or a, a semantical error I put a period after his call sign because his email address is his call dot his name at gmail and when I copied and pasted yeah, yeah. it, I didn't see the period. So he probably didn't get the August email because it was the incorrect was email. It Gmail? Yeah, it was something dot. Uh, it, it was Gmail, they don't need it doesn't matter if they have a dot or not. Or no, what I, I copied and pasted it into our server to send him there. So his his W6SF address is AE seven U whatever it is. US. US at W6SFM, I made it the, uh, AE7US dot at W6SFM. So I don't think emails were getting to him because that uh, was a dot. And uh, if it bounced, I didn't notice and I just trashed the bounce notice. So uh, sorry, Rocky, but uh, he'll, he'll now receive his emails and uh, I've asked him to confirm that he receives his September newsletter just so we can make sure he's covered. I don't want him to feel like he got left out there. All right. Uh, I will look up the Treasury report here while Chris gives his, uh, his notes on the, uh, the rest of the spiel. And uh, we'll go from there. Chris. All right. I was here last month. I think you guys are just what happened when I was gone. Uh, we had 11 members and one guest. And the Treasury report brought out it. Well, Fargo was $783.61, and now with $5,200. Now we have the total was $6,045.86. And the CW class began on September 11th. We're about that. And what else 
throwing it out there, you know, for somebody who has a VE. Wink, wink. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, everybody that signed up uh, for this club's uh, VE, we are licensed through, uh, I don't know if license is the right word, but we are certified through the, uh, through, uh, Tom, uh, through Tom in Reading, uh, who is actually one of 13 BECs uh, in the country. So if you have that and you want to help out, remember you, you, you should have your badge as a VE from this club uh, certifying you. So you can, you can give that exam. And there'll be people there that will know well how to do the work. So you can just kind of tag along like that. They just need three people. Sorry about that. Another thing is that he asked if we would send him copies of sample questions, which means he wants to have access to the question pool, and we can certainly send um, you know, links to that. Uh, but to get the youngsters to actually take the test and have a good rate of passing that test, with access to the question pool, it's probably good that they may have some coaching before they actually take the exam, something like a little exam. Because uh, you certainly don't want to disappoint a bunch of young students. Well, you don't decide you don't get your place. That's the truth. So that's the... Uh, Not everything can be handed to you anymore. Exactly. So I forwarded that information to you, Michael. So that's three events then. The Jamboree. The Jamboree on the air is a worldwide scouting event. And when, I'm sorry, I'm trying to write it down. On the Jamboree on the air is? And it's that weekend, the same weekend. It's also the weekend. It's, weekend. it's okay. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Okay. Okay. Friday, Sunday. Yeah. Where is that? Is that something that is being held locally? Just so the Jamboree is a worldwide event. Right, but I mean, is there a troop in the Sacramento area that's doing a Jamboree? Um, there may be, but I'm not aware. You're not of aware of it, okay. And if you do it at that Eternal Flame, then that will be one of the events for the Jamboree. Ah, uh, I see. So we could actually make a Jamboree on the air station yes. of the Eternal Flag at Gibson Ranch. That's right. I got it. Oh, wow. That would be great. Is there anybody interested in going to Gibson Ranch on the 19th? <clears throat> or I guess it, are they only doing a turn? The turn of flags two days also, isn't it? It's uh, I believe it's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. But they're specifically asking for the Saturday. The Saturday, that's the night. Yes. Okay. If you're interested in working the jamboree, or not? Well, technically yes. If you're interested in uh, working jamboree at Gibson Ranch, which is basically uh, Watt Avenue and that way. What is it? I think it's north of the Alberta. Yeah, it's out by the Air Force Base there. Yeah, north of the Air Force Base. Yeah. North of 80. Yeah, north of 80. Um, not that far. It's probably 20 minutes away. Yeah. But, um, yeah, if you're interested in coming out, then I'll see if I'm available. Then we'll set up a table with a buddy pole and a KX3 and we can get some kids on the air. Uh, last time John and I did it, it's a pretty fun event anyway, you know, uh, where there's a lot of activity. But uh, there were uh, there were different troops, and they each brought their own scouts over from their troops in clusters. So we would have like 10 or 15 people, kids, come over at a time to uh, to do and our little more code. Helpful, I mean, yeah, absolutely. Uh, they came closer. over, they did our Morse code uh, worksheet and practice oscillators. And uh, it wasn't the Jamboree that time, so they really didn't need to get on the air. But we had probably three or four that wanted to actually hear the radio going and, and get on the air. Um, we don't have 100 <laughs> We could probably set up a 100 watt station. Uh, with a buddy pole and a battery pack with the amplifier. So it is possible, maybe. Um, but if I can't make it, it would be nice if somebody else here uh, 
would want to do that. It's it's a great event. To, it's just great to see the kids enjoy uh, Morse code. It's not a requirement for them anymore, but it, it is a merit badge. Uh, they have this other uh, merit badge. I think it's called radio operator or radio something radio tele telecommunications. And John, I think like the paperwork from that the last time you were there. Do you recall that paperwork, John? It was like five pages long, and they had the names, all of the allocation of the frequencies from HF all the way through microwave. So they had to say, you know, this is the amateur radio bands, this is the FM radio, this is the AM radio bands, this is the like the military section, this is you know shortwave broadcast. They had to name all of what all the frequencies were. And then there were a whole bunch of, it, it may have been a novice test, you know? It was so, I looked at it and I said, I don't know that I can answer all these questions. <laughs> you know, I don't remember every allocation. I'm lucky enough to know where the sideband portion of 17 meters is, you know? <laughs> so uh, it, it was a bit of a challenge for me. So hats off to those kids who were taking that exam. But that gets them that telecommunications badge and then, uh, and they can still get a uh, Morse code badge. And I think what it is, is it's like a strip that they can pin on, and it says Morse in Morse code. Uh, and by, uh, I don't think, I think they have to get on the air and have a few so, and they have to prove they know the alphabet, I think this is what it is. Uh, I don't recall what, exactly what it was, but I, I have been told uh, that it does exist still, but it's not a requirement anymore. Like the old radio merit badge, mm -hmm. when you were done with that, if you got the radio merit badge, the only thing you had to take when you think it's not a minute to get the badge, the only thing you had to do was take the 20 quest test, mm -hmm. and you could get your amateur radio license. And there's a lot of kids that they said, oh, well, I'll go ahead and get that, and then realize, oh, hey, this is kind of fun. You know, so. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we can actually build ham radio bands by introducing Morse code to these kids. I have found that the kids respond better to Morse code than they do to side band, you know. They're interested at first when they hear the side band because it sounds funny, you know. Nobody ever tunes anyone in, right? So they hear that Star Warsy sounding <laughs> voice, and that kind of interests them. But then they walk away and they're there. Do, do you remember the TV program Jericho? Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. I've had people coming up to me all day at work after they had that episode. What was the Morse code at the very beginning? Right, exactly. So, but that's what it is with the kids. The kids yeah. hear the voice, it makes them laugh, so that's what interests them. But when they hear the code, they get excited because it's all new language. And they actually get interested enough to go home uh, with that worksheet that I give them. And some of them will memorize the code, and, and then even if they don't do anything with it right away, Later on, uh, I had one person come back and say that uh, when he was uh, like 11, he got a copy of the thing and uh, he came back uh, when he was in college and his college had a radio club and he remembered that he had had an opportunity to play around with some Morse code oscillator and that was enough to spark him to join the radio club and get his license. So even though we may not be getting them into uh, ham radio right then and there, uh, it puts the seed in their head and uh, that's what's going to keep the bands alive. And the Morse code, it really, uh, it really grabs them and, and keeps them. So definitely uh, try to help us when we do Kids Day in the Park event. Rancho Cordova, that's once a year. I think it's in April, I can't remember. And then uh, also, you want to fill those up, uh, Angie, you can just use the faucet. It's yeah, Oh, you're getting it. I figure if you want to get some ice water. Um, so uh, we have a Kids Day at the Park event. We have the, uh, the Eternal Flame and the 
jamboree, which will be running simultaneously. So uh, let's try to get some people together for that. If you would, uh, shoot me an email and let me know that you're interested. If for some reason I can't go, it would be great if you, you could bring a station out, set something up, uh, especially if you like to do QRP work in the park anyway. It's just another day to, to do it. And uh, they really uh, will welcome you there. Well, my, I was worried about the legality of having like two QRP rigs on done loads. Uh, so they, they could talk. Well, as a control operator, you're allowed to sit there and they can get on the air and talk. They don't even need to. Yeah, but we could put them on dummy loads so you wouldn't need an air. Sure, you, you could. could. I don't know that. It's I don't know how far they would transmit. Oh, yeah. I see what you're saying. Put one on the end of the park. Yeah, put one on one end of the park, one on the other end. I see. Yeah, yeah, you know, you know, well, first off, if you have two licensed operators, uh, as long as you don't surpass the class of operation, you right. are entitled to let them get on the air under your call sign as a control yeah. operator. Uh, and then, if you had two buddy poles, just as two uh, resident circuits, uh, or your little. <laughs> Harold <laughs> got the coordinator for that. Yeah. Um, you never know. Uh, that might travel uh, 300 feet or more. It's going pretty yeah. quick. Yeah. Well, I'm not three watts. Yeah. That's a quarter watt. Quarter watt? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, actually, yeah. an eighth watt. You could probably, on a quarter, even on that eighth watt, you put that KX3 down to, you know, 10 milliwatts, and you could probably, I would say, you easily get 500 feet. You know, even on a, something like that, or just a tuned diesel. Oh yeah, you get across the park. You certainly would get across parts. It's a, it's an idea. It's something to think about. Uh, I think I'd rather get them on a buddy pole and actually have them work some people. Yeah, but I might actually talk to somebody. Yeah, but in the case that uh, that's not possible, that is an option. Like you approve the maker's fair or something you're inside. Yeah, I, you know, I, I don't want to. You know, give away the whole secret, but we had a field day contact like that, very similar, uh, where uh, somebody who visited us uh, enjoyed a fantastic QSO with a DX station three feet away. <laughs> so, uh, but it encouraged him to follow on the other You know, he doesn't have a difference. And he was excited to have made his first QSO. So uh, that, was, that was really good for that. Uh, but uh, for the kids, I'd really like to have them here on air QSOs and, and try to at least make one. Generally, what I do is um, I send CQ, and then uh, once the CQ is out there, or other, uh, I'm sorry, I have them send CQ. I have a worksheet that they live, look at. Uh, even though you know I don't like to write dots and dashes, I still do because they don't know any code at all. They've never heard code for that matter. Right. So they get the dash dot dash dot dash dash dash. You know. So uh, they send the CQ DEW success at them. We stand by, and then if somebody answers, I write the call letter down. If I'm fast enough, then I'll write down dots and dashes for their call sign, have them send it back, and then tell them now send the W success F F bar. They'll send that, and then uh, I have another sheet that says uh, like five five nine five nine that sort of thing. We'll give them a signal report. And then what uh, will happen is uh, the other person will send their information clearly. I'll copy that information so that they can see. And with the KX3, it, it will read out the code for them so they can see as I'm writing that I'm not just making it up. And then, um, and then what happens is uh, I tell them, uh, or I go back to the other station and I say thank you from the Boy Scout. So they know that the reason we were going five words a minute is because it was a Boy Scout. And then uh, the, the, the Scout says 73, and, that's, and then he does the call right. signs again. So it works out pretty well, and, it, and that's enough. I mean, that's a 20 minute conversation mm -hmm. right there. <laughs> just an exchange of report of an hour. You know, it, it, it's a good, you know just to get through the call letters is a good minute and a half. Yeah. <laughs> so by the time, you know, if the other person is still there, then uh, that scout has a 15, 20-minute QSO, and he's sweating bullets already, even though he's reading it off the paper. But he's all he's excited to all get up because, you know, he's just made a QSO with somebody who knows how far away. And hey, if they're farther than Rancho Cordova, then he thinks he's just talking around the world. Just better than CBD. What is CBD? <laughs> 
thing. You'll have to tell us about your experiences on that some other time. Um, all right, let's take a quick break, maybe 10 minutes. Um, it doesn't look like anybody brought anything in. I don't know whose turn it was, so I won't rat you out. But uh, remember, there's calendar. There's a love calendar. There's at the home page, at the very bottom of the page. As a matter of fact, it's probably on every page. Uh, if you go to the bottom of the page, we'll just take the merchandise page here. Nope, it's not there. So we'll go to the home page, and at the bottom of the page, there should be a calendar. I'm not going to click it because I don't need to wrap people out, like I said. But right there, it tells you if you click on it, then it will tell you in here who's providing snacks. Okay, so uh, at the very bottom, it says snacks provided by you. You don't need to look at it. I know who it is, and uh, unfortunately, he's not here tonight. So he must be busy with some terrible shit. So, uh, yeah, if you if you volunteer, remember to the calendar and see if you're bringing the All right, so let's uh, adjourn for 10 minutes or so, and then we'll come back and we'll start some uh, show and tell. Looks like we have a lot of things to look at. So you have the sign show. We like you, but So my ticket.
parts that are coming up in there. And they all sprayed it on all the connectors and stuff. They yeah. sprayed this multi fungal stuff. I think they did. Oh, oh, I'm nervous in there about the Dremel tools and the well, no, it, it, it was really grinding. It was horrible. 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 It was horr
No, I just use the
It's no, this one's right, in the middle, middle and this yeah. one's over to the right. And I was to explain that these are all hand, every single one of these keys is different because they're all handmade. No um, two no two keys are and those are juniors? These are these are the juniors. And what was the uh, year of the junior? Um, one is 1938, one's 1939. They're, they're, they're supposed to be exactly the and same. Which one was the quickie one? The 39. Oh, okay. But it had the original feet on it, so you can imagine they were hard little rocks. So um, I, I put three brand new rubber feet on them, um, non vibroflex um, but it really took care of the, the noise. Where did you get your feet? I got these feet, um, I bought a bag of them at the radio place. Oh, okay. Oh, 100 years ago. Yeah, 100 years ago, yeah. Um, but I haven't turned to dust by now. No, oh no, they're still in Britain. You know, I, I, they're basically, you know, all gone now. I've used them. I've replaced the feet on all of my my keys. But I noticed that on Amazon, you can buy bags of like a dozen for like five ninety five. Yeah. You just have to get the the measurements correct. You know, the whole size and the size of the feet, and that'd be the way to go if you were storing telegraph keys. Just these ones from Vibroflex, they're way too high and they're way too stiff. So I always put low ones on here to lower the center of gravity and the keys seem to handle a little bit better. Yeah, well, I've seen them on eBay, or on eBay, on uh, Amazon as well. Like you said. Yeah, and I'm thinking, you know, once I get all this reconstruction done on my house and get moved back in, um, I'm going to probably order some. Some of those top parts are from the parts that you sold me. So are you going to use them? Yeah, yeah. That's good. Um, I did it to get this key back up and run it again. So. Yeah, if you didn't see those keys last month, these are in black and uh, This champion, a lot of the top parts came from Mike. <laughs> <laughs> he sold me a bag of parts. So, <laughs> where'd you get? So that worked out really good. Yeah. 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 That one's from that one was your pilot shop. Oh my god, it was terrible. And I was thinking of using it for parts, but it, you know, every once in a while I'd look at it and I finally started bringing it up and it turns, turned out so well that I used the same just about every day. And it didn't have any weights when I got it. So, Bob, I want to show you these three bugs. The champion oh, 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 and this this key that yeah, far yeah the champion this key and this third one I said how much do you want for the bucks he said forty bucks and I looked at him and I said forty bucks and he said yeah and I handed him two twenties and I said if you're serious he just he gave handed it. the box he, to you he handed the box to me so I gave the steward one to a really good friend of mine and I sold the champion for fifty bucks. So <laughs> you got a free key. Yeah, I got, I got a free key. Yeah. 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 He paid you to take the right. Yeah, it's 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 way to the right, but it handles just fine. And both top and bottom. Yeah, both top and bottom. It's whoever was drilling the holes that day. Yeah, maybe that. You know. They may have done it for some other reason. Though. Yeah. Maybe yeah. for the torque on the uh, on maybe the Maybe they had a few years, yeah. Uh, okay, so let's uh, move along. Uh, if you want to see his keys, feel free to walk over there. That'd be fine. That's a nice, uh, nice keys. So uh, let's uh, let's get a fill here so that uh, we can see some. And a ham fish I bought, an original. This is all. An original. And oh, that's a, a champion. champion. Or champion, yeah. A a champion. Champion. And then I bought two keys. Oh, One looks like yeah. a J thirty eight, but it's a. a is there a uh, serial number on that? On that like one four two. Does it tell me it's yeah, one four two four four seven. Yeah. Okay, I'll get up the rest of the serial. Now I got a And then I got a couple of uh, keys. Pass around. This guy put a key click filter in it. <laughs> Capacitor. Oh, it's an RC network. Oh, just snubber network. So that looks like a J38. But it's not a J38. 
there's, there's a brand name engraved on the bottom, but my eyeballs are so good. Well, the style is Jason. It, it certainly appears to be. That's yeah. It's very similar. Uh, it looks like it. I think you can get this part. I don't know if you can get it. Yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll find it out. And then uh, the other one, who makes that other one? It almost looks like a like a big elephant. Yeah, but I think it's a map. It's a map because first off, the base is the base is flush with the desk. Yeah. A lot of the Grimmer Wilsons and some of the other cheap knockoffs weren't they rocked. Right. And I bet that one if you take a magnet to it, it probably got a cast iron base. And that's yeah. that's the best way to tell to take a magnet to it. And see if it's got a base. <laughs> Yeah. So okay, if the magnets fits, then it's it's a metal one. Okay, yeah. So it's a cast iron. Yeah. Actually, those are nice handling keys too. What they're they're really there? nice and stiff, yeah. and they're it's it's felt nice. Chris, two o'clock. Yeah. 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 Uh, and where did you get the? Actually, they both came out of that Sunnyvale Ham Fest. They go down there once a month. Right, yeah, certainly. Is that the one that took over no. for the fall? Well, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, it's it's on the second it's Saturday of every month. So it be this Saturday. Second Saturday. Oh, this was one candle. Right. And they Sunday was the first, right? Oh, that's uh, okay. That's right. Okay. That's right. Okay. 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 And then I do have one more gadget. Uh, it's a Yeah. 
working junior antenna. We plan to get on the air uh, next week, and uh, he's going to put an extra coil on there and work a. Yeah. 
technology to run out the computer and uh, get this little tiny screen blown up. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see it. <laughs> exactly. And then how do you set the frequency that you want to measure? Uh, that can be done. This is a touch screen. Oh. So uh, you can touch the screen and up comes a menu and you can and you just you know touch where, what frequency you want to start and then to stop and then it will go ahead and run through those frequencies. How much and where from? Uh, you hear this? Fifty dollars. <laughs> uh, from Amazon. From Am yeah, Amazon and they're actually made in China. eBay's got them. There's a whole bunch of That's people. Cool. Now is that made by the same people that made the mini DNA? No, no, mini DNA is uh, from Europe. It's a bad thing. Right. This so, is nano DNA, that's what this is called. I see. So it is not the same. Yes. Believe it or not, they announced, see that's a 2.8 inch display. Right. They announced a 4.3 inch uh, display. Which is a huge difference. Oh, yeah. 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 And, um, about 145 bucks. Too much. For the one. And it's got a 500. It's got a 500. That thing better go up by 10 gigahertz. Yeah. Well, how much did you think? It's a 5 inch hour battery because it goes in the bigger one. The thing will run forever. That's a little tiny battery. It's good for about two hours. What, uh, what is oh. the battery? <laughs> is it a coin or is it a. No, it's, it's, uh, it's flat. It's flat. Oh, oh, it's a rechargeable lid. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What's the larger one called? The modern DNA. Here, I'll tell you. I just got an email on it. Let me show uh, people at home this. That Phil has all the stuff on him. That so, so, same that's just a bigger screen. For everybody who's recharging all the stuff. Uh, it's similar. Uh, yeah, I have a couple of them too. I charge them and it calculates in the puppet how it could be the house. Well, I thought I had If you if you look them up, you just, just look up nano DNA 4.3 and and you'll find it on eBay. You know, it's it's not the kind of friendly antenna analyzer that yeah. people are used to. You can pull your hair out, but I figured I'd use it. No, but for fifty dollars, I find two. It's worth pulling your hair out. They were cheap. They were fine. I use them. You said it was on Amazon. There's a little more than that made. Yeah, fifty on Amazon. That's for ten or seven megahertz. It's nano. Uh, I'm trying to go too big. I'm going too big. I said, I think so big. So. This is a couple of samples. We have no secrets. It's a sample of a 60. So we have to go 10, 50, 59, so here you go. Here's one. Billion, 189 power. This one. Uh, that's us. Up on the screen here, you'll see it. So, uh, was that the ring expert? No, that's the man. Well, this this is for my general. Uh, 10.7 megahertz. <laughs> I was just trying to figure out how to design nice filters. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, yeah, so, so, so I, 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 I This is a section, and you can barely even see down there. There's that no, the fill line, the 56 solder, and the capacitor that ties this section. One of the no, there's another one in here. So these are cast cables. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah, I'm going to do it. 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 I'm going to do it
of your hand goes to your head. Yeah, right. You put right. the right. 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 filters in there. Right. That's, that's, that's the same box. thing. The leads is crystal. I remember I built a bunch of crystal filters too over the years. Went back the next day. So 
it actually you know, if you recover it, it's turn
Uh, I just want to reiterate that next month we are having the California Kiso Party event, and that's going to be held at John's place. We will have a meeting uh, two days before the event happens, so I'll be here. I will not be able to make it to the event, uh, but what will happen is uh, everybody in this room will come to the California Kiso Party and work at least two hours each. That's so it's mandatory. And yeah, and, uh, everybody bring the extra large. Yeah, everybody bring the extra large. So the we're operating to one to one. And we will be operating. 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Yeah. So what will happen is I'll hand the computer, the club computer off to John at a meeting on Thursday. And I'll have this preloaded for our logging software. And uh, John will know the passcode to get into the computer. And and, uh, and you guys will be able to log. We're doing a single station. Uh, basically, the exchange is, is quite simple. I may have even, let me see if I put it in here. Uh, California, so now, uh, so part of the yeah, this is, uh, uh, what's it, N3JFP, is that the exchange? Okay. Let me see. Dot com. Okay. What well, where are we using? Have you decided yet? Uh, 450D. Oh. You won't use the bonus train? The bonus trophy, trophy transmitter? I'll have it available if you want. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I have a second. <laughs> I do have a second yeah. station along with the filament. Yeah, there you go. I'm actually glad that we brought that up. I think you might be because I don't believe that I have to install the software yet. So, uh, my name is Scott. Yes, thank you, Scott. Uh, so, I'm going to go ahead and install the QSO uh, Party Public Software for California. So, the club owns the, uh, club owns the license to it. So, uh, this will be the newest update. Possible. So, like, is this going to be like a pop block, or are we going to call out the pieces and stuff? That's up to John. John, how do you want to run the You want to do like a pop block, and we can have total we bring bringing. Okay, so you don't need to. Okay. I've known Jim for a long time. Yeah, probably. Okay. Yeah, probably. Actually, we're going to do this one. John, what day is that? Saturday after the meeting, so the first Saturday of the eighth, maybe. Checking. Fourth, probably. So they don't beat me to it. I think it's the fourth. Fifth. Fifth. Okay, go to the fifth. Fifth, yeah. That sounds familiar. And that's a Saturday? Yeah. Saturday. From 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. From 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, John's address is available on QRZ. You can find his, uh, his call letters. Uh, on the members directory, it's WB6 UK, Whiskey, Bravo 6, Uniform, Bravo, Kilos. And uh, everybody's, everybody's welcome. You don't have to be a member as long as you know. Well, the next meeting, we'll, we'll see who's bringing what. Yeah, we can. So we don't have a have a sign up sheet by the one thing. Yeah, everyone are people that are actually coming. Right. Let me know what who's bringing the full drop? What? That's my that's illegal now, man. Yeah, you can't you can't Mike is going to bring out one rod and crackers. And cheese. We've got a goose, man. <laughs> have I not taken it off? I'll be out of town, so. <laughs> no dancing. 
wonder. I never knew that. So whatever you do, uh, don't. Uh, what, 
There is no other mode. What other mode could there be? Work? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're... you're play two play yeah. gigs a day. Oh, good for you. At least you're making money. If any, another, another thing, if anybody's working the Hiram Percy Maxim 150 contest, yeah. the same person that wrote the logging software has it available for that contest. Oh, really? For that contest. It's uh, free. Please tell everybody what that is. They, they, some of the people here may not know what that um, is. The AWRL is encouraging people to celebrate Hiram Percy Maxim, the founder of AWRLs. 150th birthday and until Saturday at what is it 2459 or whatever time Saturday night at 000 UTC uh, you can make contacts contacting anybody in the United States basically like field day your uh, your response is a signal uh, signal quality reports so you can send 599 and your section and so the, the, those are the, the exchanges um, you get one point for every contact you make two points if you contact an AWRL member who will append stroke 150 after their call and three points if you contact W1AW stroke 150, but I haven't heard it on the air. No. Um, so anyway, the contest goes through Saturday. I noticed. I guess it's fire cheese. Pardon? <laughs> I didn't bring my didn't bring my computer. I tried at the River City. No, Arts no, no. Uh, they pooped out. You didn't bring your radio. <laughs> you get a few. Yeah. I got I got five. Five was it? And five out of eighty. Yeah. Amazing. I was surprised. Better, better, better. And, and I know I won't say it. You know, I even got you know, some unusual contacts. Well, as for Key and Oscillator, you didn't have one. Yeah. I didn't bring one. one. <laughs> I kept pushing the desk cover for where the microphone plugs in. Didn't think it was a key. You know that guy's oh, dad invented the machine gun? Iron <coughs> Percy's dad invented the machine oh, gun. Oh, like the Maxim gun. Yep. Right. And, yeah, that was the World War One scourge. And right. Iron invented the silencer. That's right. For, uh, for rifles. There is also a thing for round rear. There is a suppressor. Ah. There is no such thing. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yes. If we're going to get tech. Yes, being tech. But uh, uh, I did not know that thing. And when, it's funny, when, when you look up Iron Percy on mm -hmm. Wikipedia or something, don't even mention it, Joe Laura. Well, no. You talk about well, other inventions. We're, we're a select audience. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Why are we so, so the French mm -hmm. have a maximum. Well, listen, I appreciate everybody coming out. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank, Thank you for bringing your items in. Yeah. That really makes for a great meeting. Yeah. And yeah. white stakes for something that's for your AWR belt mm -hmm. membership. Mm -hmm. Don't forget, you can all uh, fill out your AWR membership, renew it, or if you don't already have it, you can sign up online at the W6SFM page. Um, yeah. $2 more dollars for the treasury. What's that? Two more dollars for the treasury. That's yeah. right. All right. So it's steak dinner for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you for coming, and uh, we'll thank see you guys uh, next week, uh, Tuesday on the next, and then uh, next oh, month.